All right, we're gonna get a zero to 60 in this bad boy. Oh yeah, baby. The power. All right, guys, so we're running out of daylight here, but I want to introduce you to the Roach Coach. I will explain later in this video why this is called the Roach Coach. It also has snow tires on it, you know, all summer, as a true Roach Coach should. But uh, yeah, this is a good old Honda Civic. Um, 2013. And the only modification this car has is the aftermarket wheels and snow tires and the uh, nation's flag of its owner's hometown. Or home country, I should say. So as we hop on in this interior, turn the ignition on so I can show you some stuff. Um, first of all, we've got eco mode. All right, so I'm going to show you a really cool feature that this car actually has that... I'm sure a lot of people know about already, but I never knew this about some of these cars. So if you're just cruising in overdrive, like we are right now, if you hit the gas pedal down to, it's, it's like basically maybe half throttle or a third throttle, it hits like a hard spot right there, and it'll accelerate as fast as it can without downshifting. If you go any amount further than that, it'll downshift pretty interesting. If you take it off eco mode and you do that, it'll kick down one gear. If you then push her harder, it'll kick down two gears and then harder yet, that looks like that's where it stopped. But anyway, you can basically um, kind of play with how you want your transition to shift between eco mode and that pedal half position. So I really think it's a cool feature. And then uh, you can see we've got TPMS light on and uh, low fuel. That's always a good one. We've got, uh, there's one other one too. Service do now. I don't know what services do. So it looks like B is oil and filter and one is tire rotation. So I'm thinking that's what B1 means. So it needs tire rotation and oil and filter. But this is par for the course for a Honda Civic. Now what I don't know, is how many dang miles this thing has. So we're gonna to try to find that through the menus. Um, 117,972, there you go. So 117,000 mile Honda Civic. It's really no worse for wear. It's also a you know relatively young car. But let's uh, pop the hood. Let's do some inspections here. Test number one, we're going to see if Honda Civic owners check their oil. That is the most conveniently located oil dipstick I've ever seen in my life. All right, it looks like we are just below the top of the dipstick. Of course, it won't zoom in on that. That'd be too convenient. But anyway, it does have proper amount of oil. So touche, Honda Civic owner. All right, here's the ultimate test. Does a Honda Civic owner have adequate air pressure? 25 PSI. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's low, but let's check the door sticker. Let's see what we got. 32 PSI. We are seven pounds low, so we're gonna have to fill the air pressure, fill the tires up on this beast. Two, five, close enough. It's only gonna get colder as we approach fall. Okay, so we're two for three. Sorry, we're one for three right now. Um, oil level is good, tires were low. Let's check the brakes, just a real quick check. That rotor looks really good. Pad looks very good. Okay. I would say the same thing here. Pad's a little, little, bit, little bit lower, but perfectly good. Oof, this one's getting a little bit crappy, but I would still run that. 
not too bad. I might try to take it apart and clean it up. And then the front looks really good. So I would say brakes definitely pass. So two for three, not bad on the three major items, right? Tires, brakes, and oil. And let's pop the trunk. Let's see what kind of space we're working with here. Interesting, so there's no trunk button. My Camaro's like that too. Hit the fob. I would say, okay, we got golf clubs here, so you could fit, God, I mean, you could fit a car's worth of golf clubs, I think. He's got like a box of like safety stuff, some clubs, definitely fit some suitcases. I mean, pretty good sized trunk for the size of the car, so I would say that's a win. That's not closed. Oh man, the Roach Coach's trunk doesn't want to close now. What have we done? There we go. Maybe that is closed. Yeah, he'll yell at me when he sees this video. Anyway. There it is. I swear the backup camera did not show up earlier. So that's really strange. Either that or I just didn't notice it. But backup camera does work, so that's cool. Oh, rejected. Okay, let's look at the interior. So 117,000 miles. But I'll say the interior is really no worse for wear. Um, everything's pretty clean. Pretty nice plastics and surfaces Honda uses, considering the price point of this car. Back seat looked good. As a car guy, it is easy to overlook kind of your normal, average, everyday vehicles. Even ones infested with cockroaches. They all have a very important place in society because your regular average cars are really the cars that are moving like 90% of the people, right? Most people don't have a giant pickup truck or a sports car or anything like that, right? So these cars are the reason that people are able to even get around most of the time. Um, so, and they're much more affordable. They get a lot better fuel economy. There's a ton of good reasons to buy a car like this. The, the hardest part about something like this though is of course they're you know, a little bit soulless, right? It's a little bit tricky sometimes to hop in a car like this and really enjoy what you're driving and kind of enjoy the experience that is driving. And I think that that's what makes an enthusiast most of the time an enthusiast, right? Is they, 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 they buy a vehicle that gives them a certain feeling and emits a certain amount of kind of emotion while you drive it, right? So for a lot of people, that's an older car or truck. And it's got some squeaks and rattles and maybe it's not the most fuel efficient and whatever, but it has a certain rawness and a certain feeling. In the same token, a or in the opposite token, I should say, like a BMW 7 Series is, is you're buying that because it's like the smoothest thing and quietest thing and it's just amazing in that realm, right? You're looking for the outliers. You're looking for the things that are both really good and in some sense really bad or have a lot of character. And I think that that's where these cars get a lot of hate because they don't necessarily have a lot of character but again I mean what are you doing with it if you're if you're commuting 50,000 miles a year let's say you have some ridiculous commute maybe you're not worried about character maybe you're worried about comfort relative you know relative comfort relative quietness enough power to get the job done but not so much that you're losing fuel economy and all those types of things and, and if that's the case then this is kind of the perfect vehicle for you so I think that there is a time and place for a vehicle like this even in a car guy's garage um, especially like the wife ring right if your if your wife or girlfriend's not into cars they just want something to get them from a to b you kind of can't beat a honda civic or a toyota you know corolla or whatever right like any of these kind of universal japanese cars if you will are really good options now here's the flip side of all that so this is what i want to talk about too i think there's a very real scenario where people would actually um, enjoy a sports car if they had been exposed to one. So it's kind of like the, it's the, um, I don't know, it's kind of the same effect, I guess, that occurs anytime somebody just hasn't experienced something new, right? Like if you ask somebody who's never been to another state, let's say, or another country, if they like traveling, they probably are going to say no, they don't like traveling because it's just not something they've ever done. Whereas if you talk to somebody who's been to, you know, all 50 states, for example, they're probably going to tell you they like traveling because they're they're a traveler. So some of these things are kind of baked into our life experience. And if you've been exposed as a kid or even you know as a younger adult to more performance-oriented vehicles or whatever it is, you're going to probably have a tendency to want one and appreciate it for what it is. So 
that's the other that's the other side of it where if you do only ever drive cars like this but you just might kind of be missing out on on you know what else is out there right you might be missing out on something that you you, know, you could have so there's that side of it too but anyway enough about all those details let's talk about the car itself so far um, the cool thing about this car too is that it was actually totaled not that long ago or last year the thing that we need to note here is the uh, quarter panel damage um, basically you can see here we're dented in not that far but it was enough to actually total the car which is really not ideal and uh, this also does hit the tire if you hit a big enough bump however the tire is not uh, damaged from what I can tell so that's a good thing this is the story behind the Roach Coach. My friend Marcus owns this car. You've actually seen him on the channel once or twice. We've done a couple of uh, motorcycle related videos with him. And uh, <clears throat> this car unfortunately had a cockroach infestation for a little while. He went down to New York City to take a flight out. The problem was the uh, parking lot that he was at evidently allowed cockroaches to get inside of his car. Um, so yeah, kind of an interesting little backstory this poor car had. So I would say first of all, from a first impressions perspective, any of these small cars that I've driven or ridden in, I notice there's a lot of tire noise. Um, for whatever reason, I think just because you're pretty close to the ground, they don't have a ton of insulation. This also has snow tires on it, so that's gonna be, you know, not a very good example of tire noise. There's gonna be a lot of tire noise. But uh, generally speaking, even despite that, they they tend to have a lot of tire noise. And that can sometimes give you the feeling that a car is like kind of crappy if it's just real loud from the tires. Um, but as far as like engine quietness and smoothness, you know, transmission smoothness. It is amazing the difference that more modern and what I'll call economy cars this is really an economy car, but just more modern cars in general have done when it comes to transmissions and, and engine combinations. You take any modern car, engine trans combo, and they're just, they shift so much faster, they're so much smoother, they do such a better job of just getting you down the road. It is, it is really quite refreshing um, to hop in any modern car compared to back in the day where, unless it was a sports car, you, you kind of had like a lot of compromises with some of these vehicles that existed. The visibility is actually amazing. They have these little like, almost like smoker windows back in the day. And it's phenomenal because they, they really give you a lot better view of that front corner of the vehicle. Um, and you just don't see that anymore. So that's a really cool touch that you'd think like an American car might still have, but yet it's, it, it's in a Honda, so that's kind of neat. I also like all of the HVAC controls and the radio. I mean, it's all just super simple buttons. I A lot of people say this, but I totally agree. I hate when everything's buried in a screen nowadays and you can't even turn your AC on without hitting four menus. It's just silly. Like Teslas are super cool and minimalist and I do like the way that, that look, they look, but it is honestly just a pain in the butt to have to like dig through menus and they do a pretty good job of keeping them relatively exposed on the outer perimeter of the screen, but. I still, I'm an old school, you know, hard physical button kind of guy personally. Now, once we're getting on the highway here, um, I would say you definitely start to hear that tire noise and just road noise in general. So even without the snows, I can just tell that, you know, this is a louder interior than even like my Camaro. Now my Camaro's exhaust might make it louder enough that it's, you know, gonna be a little bit more than this, but this is not gonna be a particularly quiet car. You know, this is, these are the types of things that make these cars affordable, right? Is they're, they're going to have some sacrifices. So it's not gonna be the quietest experience that you possibly could ever have. And I wanna point something very important out. So we're gonna give her a fire up. Oh yeah, four cylinders of fury. So my friend left me on the freaking fuel light after specifically telling me that I better not leave him on the fuel light in the Camaro because he doesn't want to put gas in it.
As you just saw there, I had to put 34 freaking dollars worth of gas in this guy's car. Unbelievable. You know, part of me wanted to splash like a gallon in there and then give it back to him with like 20 miles range just so he'd have to fill the whole tank. But uh, I'm such a nice away. guy. This... I'm just such a nice guy that I didn't do that. But uh, needless to say, you will be hearing about this for the next probably two to three months because I like to really recycle my jokes and use them over and over and over again. What do I think of the Roach Coach? Overall, it is a perfectly serviceable, good vehicle. Um, it, it really makes a lot of sense for a lot of people, like I said throughout the video. I just, at the end of the day, as a car guy, and this is a first world problem, and this is just something that we do to ourselves, being car guys and spending a lot of money on cars and all that kind of stuff, you spoil yourself. And I am just, I don't know, I'm just a lot happier driving something that is what I deem interesting, right? It doesn't have to be fast, it doesn't have to be new, it doesn't have to be whatever, just something that I, I consider special and unique and um, just a, you know, premium driving experience from a field perspective. So, unfortunately a car like this, not that I'd be miserable driving it, but I just wouldn't be passionate about driving the way that I'm passionate about driving my Camaro or even my trucks or whatever, right? And to me, a lot of people say, oh yeah, well that's why these are the perfect commuter cars, but I actually kind of think it's the opposite. So this is like a, this is a hot take of mine. A commuter car, you're driving on the same roads day in and day out, and it's potentially boring because you're going to work and whatever, right? So I want a fun car to make my commute at least marginally interesting, right? If I'm in a, you know, if I have like a weekend car, drive around on the weekends, well now obviously that fun car is going to be even more fun on the weekends, but if I'm, if I'm on the weekend, I'm probably going somewhere that's interesting. So if I was in a boring car, but I'm going to an interesting activity, you know, you're going to a concert, you're going to a cool restaurant, you're going, then like, yes, the fun car can enhance that, but you don't like need the fun car at that point because you're already doing an interesting thing at the end of that trip. So the drive there doesn't necessarily have to matter as much. So I actually think it's the opposite. I think your fun cars you should commute with and should use and should enjoy. And then, you know, maybe for long trips, you take a little bit more sensible car if your fun car has reliability issues or is getting older and whatever. But I don't know. I just think that it's very, it's important to drive these things and just get your car out there and enjoy it and have fun with it and, uh, you know, not just let it sit there. And to me, that's an easy, easy way to do that if you're taking it on your commute. Um, but, you know, I can see the, if you have a long enough commute and a fuel inefficient enough fun car, I do understand why you would buy something like this. However, I would then say, just take something like this two days a week, three days a week, maybe even four days a week. Like at least use the fun car a little bit, right? I'd rather get 13 miles per gallon in my truck and really enjoy my drive into work than get 30 in this every single day and just kind of be like, blah, right? So. I don't know, that's my car guy analysis, you know, maybe, maybe you don't go to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts and get that mocha latte that costs $6 and put a little bit of that money toward a couple of gallons of fuel, you know, that's always an option as well, but uh, anyway guys, that's a whole nother video, so as always, thanks for watching, God bless America, and I'll see you on the next one, bye.